Good evening, everybody. Great to see you all. We do have just a handful of people still in the waiting room, so try to let them all in before we get started officially. Thanks for joining us tonight on this pretty important evolving topic. We'll be talking, as you can see in the shared screen, about SOL assessments for this upcoming year. All right, our two primary presenters tonight are going to be our school test coordinator, Mr. Tom Chuba, and our director of school counseling, David Edwards. Uh, we are gonna use a form of PowerPoint tonight that we'll make available on our website after the presentation. Actually, probably easiest if we put it on the Atlas website, so they got a nice organization of our previous town hall meetings. And then we'll also make the uh, video record, the uh, recording of this particular call available. I think usually Mrs. Komai, to whom we owe a deep debt of gratitude, she's on the Atlas Board of Directors and is the host for all of these meetings. She had, generally has these posted about 24 hours after the meeting, within 24 hours. So this information will be available for your reference in a couple of formats when we finish tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to David Edwards, our Director of School Counseling, and he'll get us started telling you what you need to know. And I, I'm sorry, Mr. Edwards, before you start, I should point out that there is, a, we'll go ahead and put in the chat a Google form link that you'll be able to use to submit questions if you'd like us to answer them. That's probably preferable to the chat because it's just a little easier for me to monitor that spreadsheet than to monitor the chat as it scrolls down. You can also use the chat and we will try to monitor that as we go along. But first thing I'll do is get the link to those to that Google form into the chat here in the next few seconds as we get started. Mr. Edwards. Hello, good evening. Uh, this evening we would like to present uh, um, many uh, details and updates to the way SOLs will be running this year. Uh, but before we get into a lot of those details and updates, I'd like to just take a few moments and frame our discussion tonight by uh, doing really three things before I, I hand it over to our school test coordinator, Mr. Chuba. I'd just like to talk about the purpose of SOL exams, why they exist, what we do with them. Uh, secondly, I want to look at how we use SOL test scores. And uh, third, I want to provide a very overly simplistic um, advising guidelines that, that uh, you might be very helpful as we move through this presentation this evening. All right. So first I want to talk about how um, SOLs are used. So the SOL's primary use is for awarding verified credits that student need, students need for graduation. Um, Every student needs a certain amount of verified credits to graduate, and we're gonna break that down class by class in just a moment. Uh, the scores are also the other primary function is to use um, for school accreditation. It's one measure of how well our school does um, compared to other schools in the state. Uh, scores, uh, by almost all accounts, are used in kind of a binary faction, uh, fashion either pass the SOL or they don't pass the SOL. There is a scale score attached to them, but just about every way that they're used um, is either pass or, or not pass. And that's true in, in how we award verified credits and school accreditation. Uh, we do use SOL test scores and in a couple of other ways. And uh, we really, you know, I've talked to many people and, and we want to make sure that this is right. But uh, um, so one other way, the SOL test scores are used is for advisement. A lot of times when we have questions about a student, we'll sit down and we'll take a look at uh, their SOL scores. One of many measures that we always look at whenever we're trying to learn more about a student. Really the second other way that SOL test scores are used outside of general purpose of awarding verified credits or school accreditation is uh, before the pandemic, NOVA was using uh, the SOL math scores to help students qualify for dual enrollment courses. 
Now you may have questions about where you can find information about your students' verified credits. I want to let you know that these are available to view in parent view in two places. The first is um, you can go under the documents tab and the very first link at the top is an unofficial transcript and, and the verified credits are listed on that unofficial transcript. The second place you can look is under the course history parent view. Uh, you have to turn the details on and then you can see all the verified credits that uh, your student has earned. One of the things we want to make very clear is uh, the ways that SOL scores are not used. SOL scores are not reported to colleges. They're not used in admissions. Uh, just about every year I have a panic student who uh, wants to know um, if, if we report SOL scores, we all the colleges, they always tell us the same thing that they, that they do not want, uh, or, nor do they know how to interpret SOL scores. Uh, they're not used for scholarships. Uh, when we look at SOL scores, as far as um, where to place students in certain classes, uh, the SOL score is never used as a barrier to prevent a student from taking a specific class outside of the dual enrollment courses However, there are ways around that. And lastly, SOL scores are not used to uh, participate in athletics, clubs, or honor society. Now, I just want to remind everyone of what happened last spring. Last spring, the SOLs were canceled. There was absolutely no SOL testing at the end of the year. Now, the state uh, provided some guidelines whereby LCPS was able to award credits to students. And I'm going to give this in a very oversimplified uh, terminology. So essentially, if a student passed the course, then they received a verified credit, which means that the vast majority of our students were successful. And many, many of our students earned three verified credits last year. Um, and all those awarded verified credits are going to count towards tuition, uh, the same as if uh, the students came into the school and took the exam. So now I'd just like to get a very overly simplified approach to advising um, a large group of people about students. And I'm doing this so you can kind of frame and, and prepare yourself for, for some of the updates that are going to come your way. But for many of our seniors, uh, their graduation graduate, they require either six credits for the standard diploma or nine verified credits for the advanced diploma. Uh, now I looked over the list today and we have very, very few seniors who still need SOLs in order to graduate. But in every one of those cases, Mr. Chuba and those students counselors have been in contact with those seniors. And they are very aware of a plan, a testing plan for, for each and every one of those students. If your student is a junior, now, juniors have a very have a different set of graduation requirements, and they are only required to pass five verified credits in order to graduate. We know that most of our juniors have earned verified credits in their math, their social studies, and their sciences over the past two years. Uh, we also know that this is the first year that your students have had the opportunity to take the reading and writing as well, both of which are required for graduation. Uh, before we move off to juniors, I just want to put a plug in for a program we're running um, on March 15th. We'll be talking with uh, the parents of juniors about some post-secondary planning. So uh, please pencil that uh, date into your picture. Now our sophomore classes, if you're a parent of a sophomore, you have the same graduation requirements as juniors. And we know that most of our 10th graders last year were successful in all their courses, in which case they earned a math, a social studies, and a science verified it last year. So as a result, uh, most of our sophomores um, are, are in a good spot. Uh, they won't have an opportunity to take the reading and writing SOL until next year. Uh, so for many, many, many of our sophomores, the only decisions that they'll need to make this year are regarding uh, biology. And Mr. Chuba is gonna provide a little bit more details on that. 
Lastly, I just want to touch on our freshman uh, students, our ninth grade students this year. Uh, these students are going to need five verified credits in order to graduate. Um, many of our, uh, some of our students have already received a verified credit in their math course. Um, the nice thing about uh, being the parent of a freshman is uh, currently uh, you have a lot of options and you have a lot of time. Um, so one of the critical decisions that every parent uh, family of a freshman student is going to need to make is about the math as well. Now I'm going to turn some time over. Hopefully that uh, helped frame kind of our discussion today. I would like to turn some time over now to uh, Mr. Chuba, provide some more details and updates for this upcoming year. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Um, a question that came that popped up had to do with how a verified credit is awarded. For a verified credit to be awarded, the student um, is currently required to pass the class and pass the SOL. So there are two steps to get the verified credit. Last year, all they had to do was pass the class under the emergency um, regulations from the Department of Education. You see on the screen that the regulations in Virginia tell us that students must come into the building to take an end of course test. They cannot do it remotely. They have to come into the building. And so we're going to address some of those issues as we go through the, uh, the details. And I, I couldn't find the button, I'm sorry folks, for doing the slideshow myself. So I have to keep asking Mr. Edwards to go to the next slide. So the first SOL coming up affects the juniors. And it's the English 11 writing SOL, which is in two parts. There's a multiple choice part and an essay part. And we're looking to give the um, multiple choice part on the 8th of March and follow up with the essay part on March 15th. So these are two Mondays. Testing on Mondays helps keep our kids in the classroom rather than pulling them from class. So next slide, please. But the students have some options to make, you know, they have some choices and sitting down and speaking with their parents and counselors would be a good idea um, for them to, to do. You can take the SOLs, that's the easy, an easy choice. Juniors can delay taking the SOL, you know, if they're worried about COVID and things like that. So this year only, um, they, the VDOE will let juniors delay taking the writing SOL, so put it off till the fall of senior year. You can, as a junior, take the entire two-part SOL in one day, but we would have to get, I would have to get some type of email or something from a parent uh, stating they want to put their child through that. Personally, I would not recommend that. It's, it's a lot to expect a student to sit through in one day. If you have a student in the AP Lang class, the student can opt to use their AP score as a substitute score for the SOL. So what that means, you're basically not going to take the writing SOL, you're opting not to take it, you're waiting to see what your AP score is, and it needs to be a minimum of a two. And if you, as long as you get that two, then you've passed the writing SOL. So that's an option that the juniors have. Now I sent out to all of the English 11 students an email with some of these explanations for the writing SOL and asked them to complete a Google form because I need to track what people want to do in order to know how many students to expect on March 8th. Um, and it also uh, asked if people needed a bus. Now the deadline has already gone past for transportation. So 
any other forms that I get at this point, I cannot arrange any bus transportation. And I do check the, um, the spread, the Google sheet where all the forms come in. So, and they're time stamped. So if I notice like there's two from Susie Smith, I can see which one is later to see if something's changed. So I am looking at that. So hopefully more students will finish filling those out for me. Next slide. And we do have some seniors who, who still have to take some SOLs. We were able to, to clear a, a large backlog of SOLs for seniors in December, January, February. And that was a huge help. As Mr. Edwards said, there's not that many seniors left that are um, needing SOLs. And we'll probably start testing them again around April 19th. That's the next time I'm permitted to do that. Next slide. Staying with English 11, the reading SOL will most likely be given during the week of April 26th. Hopefully we can find a way to get everybody in on Monday, April 26th, so that no one misses classes. But you have options here. Next slide. The reading SOL is needed to complete the verified credit, passing English 11, and you pass the reading SOL. So with English 11, there's actually two verified credits, one for writing, one for reading. The other issue with the reading SOL is it's needed for federal accountability. We have to report to the federal government how many folks we test in reading and how many pass. So those are two things that we're required to do for the federal government. Writing does not have that requirement, but you still need it for graduation. Next slide, please. Students have options for reading in, you know, when we get to late April. They can, once again, take the SOL. If the student is in AP Lang, once again, the student can opt to use the AP exam as a substitute test pass the AP test, and you not only get your verified credit in writing, you also get it in reading. But there's a little wrinkle there, which I think is on the next slide. Okay, so if the this, this student um, wants to use their AP test, the parent has to actually refuse to let the student test. What happens is a score of zero is awarded. Um, well, there's two, let me, I'm a little off on my slides, hang on. I'm looking at a different. I have my other computer up, sorry folks, so I can see if I can read these better. And that didn't work either. Okay. So a parent can refuse to let a student test. If you refuse, if a parent does that, the score of zero is awarded and the student um, must then take and pass the SOL during their senior year to earn the verified credit. And there's a special form that has to be completed. So that's option three, not tied to the, um, to the Lang AP, uh, Lang class. So you can actually refuse to have your child take the reading test this year. So sorry for the uh, conclusion or mix up. With the reading SOL, before I talk about science, sorry, Mr. Edwards, is that the when you, when the parent or when the student wants to use the AP test score for their reading score, we also have to get a parent refusal. So it's not a simple, I'm opting to do, you know, to replace my writing score with the AP score. We actually have to have a refusal on file, which we hold. The zero is temporarily awarded. When the AP score comes back, then the zero is replaced by passing 
and the refusal form is destroyed um, and it doesn't hurt the student at all. So a parent refusal form in this case for a, an AP Lang student would not harm the student in any way as far as a verified credit. It will affect some calculations for what the school goes through, but it doesn't affect the student. So parent refusals could be for the AP Lang to put up, to wait until you get the AP exam score, or a parent could just outright refuse due to COVID concerns to have their child take the reading SOL in the spring and then next fall, in the fall of their senior year, I would be looking for those students who had not yet taken the reading SOL to get them to take it next fall so that they meet their verified credits for graduation. So hopefully I was able to clean all that up for our junior parents here. Now we can go on to science. Depending on our AP exam schedule, which is still up in the air at the county level, so I'll be upfront with that, we don't know what LCPS is going to choose to do other than we know it is not going to be up to the schools, the AP teachers, or the students. It, the the county is going to choose one thing and everybody's going to follow it. So until we know that, we're estimating that the science SOLs could be given during the week of May 3rd. Next slide, please. Normally, earth science is the science people take as a freshman and it's the SOL they take and they knock off their science verified credit right away in their freshman year. So our current sophomores got credit last year for earth science, our current juniors, same thing happened. Um, and then we had the biology wrinkle, which happens during sophomore year that I'll get to. And what um, happens, as I said, is you pass the SOL and you get a verified science credit and your science credit is done. All right, Mr. Edwards. This year, because of COVID, students can opt, so this would be our freshmen, can opt to take the SOL, or you can simply delay, but I, have, I would have to be notified, and that'll be a separate email in May or April. You can choose to wait until junior year and take the biology SOL, as your science SOL. And basically you skip the earth science SOL this year. Next slide, please. The biology SOL is needed for a verified credit if the science, S if the earth science SOL is skipped or failed. So rather than a potentially attempt to retake the earth science SOL, People can take the biology SOL and get their science VC that way. It's also used by Virginia as the science test for meeting federal accountability. So just like reading, it has two purposes. Next slide, please. So the student options are when you take the SOL, the biology one, if you need it uh, for your science verified credit for graduation. So if you have skipped it, skipped earth science, you want to take biology, okay. If, then we'll go on. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Parent can refuse to permit their student to take the biology SOL if the student already has a science verified credit. So if they take the earth science, SOL, they get their verified credit. A parent can say, I don't need my student to sit through the biology SOL. So what happens is a score of zero is recorded for the SOL score and no verified credit is awarded 
for biology. But because you've already got your one science as your earth science verified credit, this doesn't hurt the student. You know, the student moves on, nothing happens as far as earning the diploma because now diplomas are earned based on coursework rather than numbers of verified credits. So a parent has this option um, and we have to document it with the parent refusal form. Next slide, please. Math SOLs also have a number of wrinkles. We are hoping, depending on their decision uh, at the county level, to potentially begin the math SOLs as early as May 10th. But this also depends on our AP exam schedule. Next slide, please. The federal accountabilities rules for math state that a student must take basically a math SOL when they are physically present in high school. So that means if you have a student who I think it might be part of the next slide, Mr. Edwards. Okay, well, if your student is a freshman taking Algebra 1, that's great. They're taking in a math SOL as a freshman in Dominion High School. They can get their VC and accountability is satisfied. Now the wrinkle comes in. If you take and pass a high school math class in middle school and you take the SOL in middle school, you get the verified credit for your diploma. So there is your math verified credit. But unfortunately, the federal accountability isn't met because the student did this while they were physically attending a middle school. So then the next slide, the student has these options. So let's say that you have a freshman student who took and passed Algebra 1 and the Algebra 1 SOL over at Seneca Ridge. Now they're probably in geometry. The student could go ahead and take the geometry SOL so that you know Dominion can account for a student taking a math SOL while they were in high school. Or next option. Once again, the parent can refuse the SOL if the student already has the verified credit. And just like what happens with uh, biology, if you refuse the biology because you already have earth science, score of zero is awarded and no verified credit is awarded, say, for geometry, but the student isn't harmed. So this, po this pops up with um, geometry, potentially for a freshman, or potentially algebra two, let's say if in seventh grade they did algebra one and in eighth grade they did geometry. Now, if you have a student who sixth, seventh and eighth grade did all three of those math classes, then um, the school could look for a different test that's considered an equivalent to take care of the uh, federal accountability. Okay, social studies. Social studies is very, very different this year. This year, once again, this year only, social studies courses are going to use performance assessments in place of the SOLs. So that means freshmen, you're, you're not taking a World History One SOL. Freshmen will have a performance assessment in World History One. If you have a sophomore who potentially did not pass the World History One SOL, which probably unless they failed the class, that wouldn't happen because everybody got credit. But if there are, are other areas where a student might need the social studies SOL to complete their graduation requirements, and they are currently taking a social studies class, 
as such as World History One, World History Two, or U.S. and Virginia History, those are the three SOL classes. They would do could take or would be given the performance assessment. So more information regarding performance assessments will come via your students' teachers because all of those details for who needs one and what type will be given will be trickling down through the social studies folks at the county level. Okay, next slide. So if you're concerned about the mass testing, we have the student desk set up for mass testing in the auxiliary gym, the cafeteria, and the main gymnasium. And from center of desk to center of desk, side to side, and front to back, it's eight feet. So basically there's an eight foot bubble around the desks. Um, that is, the, those are the guidelines we're using to protect the students while they're testing. All of the students and staff have to be screened prior to entering the building. So the test takers go through screening, all of the proctoring staff go through screening before everybody's in the, the testing rooms. Next slide. Everybody has to wear a mask for the entire event. So all the proctors, the room monitors, the students all have to do this the entire time they're testing. And since SOLs are not timed, the length of time that a student is in there testing once directions are finished is entirely up to them and how efficiently they work. The restrooms are, actually, are monitored, not inside the restroom, but we keep track outside that we can only allow a maximum of six people in the restroom based on you know the number of sinks and keeping people properly distanced in the restrooms. Next slide, please. So th these are all the precautions we've used all year long for all of our Saturday SATs, the ACTs, the PSATs that we've done um, on weekdays. So our Saturday testing, we've hosted up to 250 students on all of those Saturday testings with all of these precautions. And to our knowledge, because no one's reported anything, none of our staff members have had any issues, the, the people that are proctors and et cetera on Saturdays, none of, the, none of the Dominion students who have tested or even Loudoun County ones that I'm aware of, no one has had any COVID transmission at all with all of these precautions. So hopefully if you were worried about how we do these things, um, we've had a lot of practice from way back in September doing the Saturday exams. And I think the last slide is my email. So I'm, I am more than happy to field your email questions um, I'll let you know if you try to call me. A lot of times I, I'm working from home. Um, I will share with all of you, I am a high risk health person. So um, I work from home as much as I can, but um, I have comfortably survived all of this mass testing with all these precautions. But anyway, if you try to call me, you'll get a message on my phone that basically says if I'm not, if I'm not picking up you should probably email me because I could be working from home rather than being in the office to return calls. Um, so that's just a heads up if you're trying to ask me questions. And I think Dr. Brewer has been monitoring the chat so I don't know what other questions people have. Well there are a few here Mr. Chu but maybe some scenario type things that would make sense. Sure. Uh, math is probably the most confusing area. So let me just pr present a scenario to you. A student took algebra one and geometry in middle school 
Uh, one of those courses was taken last year, so that students already earned their math verified credit. They're currently involved, enrolled in Algebra 2 in the ninth grade, and the federal, gui the federal accountability guidelines require us as a school to offer that student the opportunity to take Algebra 2. Does the parent have the opportunity to decline for their student to take Algebra 2? It obviously does not hurt the student because they already have their math verified credit, but what happens if they don't take the Algebra 2 SOL? Sure. Actually, if the student took Algebra 1 and Geometry in middle school and passed the SOLs, they've already, they already have two math verified credits in their, in their pocket, even though they only need one. But the answer to the question is yes, a, a parent can refuse. We would just need um, the parent refusal form, which we we'll probably need to put that link on our web the Dominion webpage for people so they can download it and fill it out and send it back in. Um, but yes, the parent can refuse the Algebra 2 SOL because their student has the math. It does not affect the student passing the class or anything like that. They're still going to get credit for passing the class and they don't need the verified credit for their diploma at all. This is a very nuanced question. Very few students would be in this situation, but what about the math student who's in the ninth grade who's already completed Algebra 2 and is in an advanced math course? Do they have to take a math SOL at the high school level? There isn't one for them to take, right? No, there there isn't. And so, um, and I have to be honest, I'm not aware of what alternate tests or substitute tests um, LCPS is using to fulfill the federal accountability. I have, I've seen the list, but I just don't remember it because it's one of those unusual ones that um, I don't encounter a lot. But yeah, there's no SOL for any advanced math classes. So once again, federal accountability um, affects Dominion. Uh, the participation rate, you know, the number of students who take an exam divided by the number of students who we have enrolled in those classes that have that SOL. And then there's the pass rate, you know, how many actually pass the exam. So it doesn't affect the student. All right, let's review. I'll take this question on. Several um, have asked in the Google form and in the chat here about 10th graders typical SOL requirements. So the typical 10th grader is enrolled in a science class that has an associated SOL test. If the student took, um, there are two different scenarios for science student in science. One is the student who took biology last year has already earned their verified credit and that student has met the federal accountability guideline, Mr. Chuba, or? Yes, not. they have. Okay, so if a student took science biology last year as their science course, they no longer have a, any need to take an SOL in science. That's correct. They'd most likely be in chemistry, which has an SOL, but they wouldn't need to take the SOL. Now, this freshman who last year, now a sophomore, who took earth science last year as a freshman, they have their verified credit, so they're in great shape. The federal government wants them to take biology SOL, but the parent could refuse that with no negative ramifications for the student. That's correct. Parent can refuse that. So, so they the need most, to form again. For the most part, our sophomores don't need to take an uh, SOL in science unless their student did not successfully pass their science class last year. That's correct. The other um, possible um, SOL it, for a sophomore would be math. And again, that would only be in a situation where the student failed their math course last year as a freshman. Otherwise, they would already have passed a course and have received and earned a verified credit. Yes. 
and there'd be no expectation even from the federal government that a student take another one in that situation. I don't believe so because the federal government did not collect data last year. So for sophomore parents, um, bottom line is your student really doesn't have to take any SOLs, but you likely have to opt your student out of biology if they passed earth science last year. Right, they would have to, if they're currently in biology, the expectation is to take the biology SOL, but the parent can refuse. And that's just simply completing the parent refusal form. And there are no repercussions on the student for that. There's a question about parent view. I'm going to take my best stab at it. Mr. Edwards, you, if you know better than I on this, uh, please jump in and correct me. In parent view, you can see your students' past uh, grades in courses they took, and you can also see their past performance on any standardized tests that they took. So putting those two together, you can determine which verified credits they have earned. On a quick review, I don't see a place where it specifically just list the verified credits, but a past class plus a past SOL test equals a verified credit. So the information is there, although you have to put those two pieces of data together to draw the conclusion that a verified credit has been awarded. Yeah, the verified credit information can be found in a couple of places in Parent View. Um, the first, like I said, if you go to documents, it's the last tab on the left-hand navigation bar. The first document in there is a transcript. Transcript will list all the classes the student has taken, whether or not they receive credit. And then the next column is whether or not they receive a verified credit. The second place you can go is to the course history in parent view. Um, if you uh, go to the um, course history and you click the detailed view of the course history, you'll be able to see the verified credits that your students have earned. Uh, you can also check the testing history. Um, the testing history does not give you a very good sense of it get passed, you got a verified credit, um, but you can look in there. If a student took a, a, an SOL and scored more than a 400, they, uh, they received a verified credit. Uh, really the best, if, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to your school counselor uh, they'll be more than happy to answer that, those questions for you because, you know, it, it may be confusing um, and the school counselors do it every single day. So if there is confusion, just reach out to your school counselor. That may be the best course of action. At this point, I think we have answered every question that I see. All right, here's one. Here's one we haven't answered. Maybe a good one for you, Mr. Tuba. Is taking the SOL, do students leave the building as soon as they are finished with their test? Or do they have to wait for everyone to finish? Probably a couple different scenarios there, but can they leave the testing room when they're finished? Let's start there. Or do they have yes. to wait till every okay? So they can leave the testing room. If it's a day of school and they're a hybrid student, they would of course return to class. If it's a day of school and they're a distance learning student, we would want them to get home so they can return to class. Um, on the other hand, we're hoping to do quite a bit of the testing on Mondays. So if we're testing on a Monday, then obviously there is no class to return to. It's an asynchronous workday for, for students. So the last scenario is if your student needs a bus ride though, if your student needs a bus ride, they gotta wait around for the bus, but not yes. in the testing room. No, so we will have to um, establish a waiting area for those who come in by bus because the buses will deliver the students at approximately nine and return four hours later to pick up. So we can certainly find a location for the student to wait until the buses leave or the student could walk home, drive home, or certainly a parent could come pick them up, but they don't have to wait in the testing room any longer than it takes them to complete the SOL exam. That is correct. 
I, in my review of the chat and the questions submitted through our Google form, I think we've answered them all. Um, so the best tab to look in in parent view, Mr. Edwards, thank you for supplementing. What I shared is look in the documents tab and look for the transcript. Does that sound correct, Mr. Edwards? Yeah, that's correct. We've uh, uploaded an unofficial transcript to every student's parent view. Uh, um, and that's there for your free to review. Uh, verified credits are listed on there uh, pretty prominently. So for the, for the parents, when you look at a transcript, let's say you're looking at, um, you're a sophomore parent and you are looking last year and, and look up earth science, you'll, you see two numbers. I, I believe it's something like 1.000 slash 1.000. So you, you get one number, the first number says you got the credit for passing the class. The second number says you got the verified credit due to uh, either passing or as in last year, getting just being given credit for the SOL. Um, if you're a senior parent who's on the, in the meeting and you looked say under English 11, you would see a 1.000, I believe, slash 2.000 so that you, they got the credit for passing the class and then the two credits associated with the SOL. And um, that's, I look at all the transcripts and I look, I can look at all the testing histories and the reports I get from the assessment office. So there's three different pieces of data that I look at for every student who we think might need to be tested so that we make sure we're not missing anyone or testing anybody that we don't need to test. All right, and the start time for SOLs, that's a complicated question. The only thing we know absolutely for certain about the testing timeline is that the SOL writing tests for students enrolled in English 11 will be administered on Monday, March 8th, and or Monday, March 15th. It is a two-part test. Usually students take one part the first day and then a second part on another day, but there is an option to do both in the same day this year. You need to notify Mr. Chub if you want to do the same day um, uh, testing. The, so the, um, the buses, transportation is saying they, they anticipate getting students to the schools between nine and nine fifteen, and I think Dr. Brewer, we only have like four people who responded that they needed a bus, so it's it's not very many. We would anticipate, depending how long it takes to do the review of the COVID medical forms and the temperature checks, hopefully we would have the students all seated in their rooms by. I don't know, 9.35, 9.40. We're pretty good at moving the kids through from all of our Saturday practices. And uh, directions, once everybody has settled and you know the phone's been all turned off and all that kind of good stuff, once everyone's settled and we start directions, the directions take maybe 20 minutes to read because they're scripted and the proctors are required to read the uh, exact scripting and then the students would start. So I would estimate students potentially starting to take the test between 10 and 10, 15. And if they work efficiently, they would be done in two to two and a half hours because that's what they're designed for. Math takes a little bit longer than that. So your student would be finishing up around 12, 1230, maybe as late as one o'clock, depending on their efficiency. So if you're looking for, for that type of time, who, if people ask that kind of question, then that's um, what you'd be looking at timing wise if you were dropping off and picking up. 
I think a question just came through, Dr. Brewer. I see two uh, new questions. Uh, one, one from way back we haven't gotten to yet, and then the one that just came in. If a student has accommodations, they do apply to SOL tests. The, the remember that the one of the most important accommodations is extended time, and the SOLs are an untimed test, so that accommodation is unnecessary. Other accommodations are certainly made on behalf of students, including things like read aloud, small group testing, which are probably two of the most prominent. Anything else to add about that, Mr. Chuba? No, we would have um, small group testing, which I have researched already, um, as well as audio for students that require audio. And what I have remaining to research for our EL students are those that would need um, a bilingual dictionary or an English dictionary for their SOLs. I, I would just add to that too, that uh, students will receive their accommodations without any action of the parents, unlike the SAT or ACT where there needs to be an application and, and uh, there, there's more of a process. But for SOLs, the, the accommodations, if the students receive them in school, they automatically receive them for the SOL if they're applicable. Right, they're either in the, the student's IEP or in their uh, EL plans. And to my knowledge, the last unanswered question, Mr. Chuba, fits squarely in your court. At what What's the deadline for any given test that a parent wants to report their student as a test refusal rather than a participant? The morning of. I thought that's what you were gonna say, although I would ask that you bail us out a little bit. Obviously we are testing hundreds and hundreds of kids. So it's helpful to know that at least a few days in advance, the morning of would be quite a quite an adjustment for us. We can do that, but if you can give us a little advance notice, that would help. Yes, I'm gonna to have to uh, actually assign students to rooms and potentially to desks so that I've got everybody accounted for. And then a great question here, the, the freshmen, the freshmen are the ones who really take the brunt of the testing load here um, in many respects. So it is expected by the federal government, at least, that every freshman takes the applicable SOL tests. If your student has already earned a verified credit in math, you can opt them out and your student in uh, science, if they're a freshman, um, needs to earn a verified credit almost certainly. So taking the test this spring helps them to do that. While you can opt them out of that experience this year, eventually they're going to have to earn that verified credit in science. We would probably recommend to you, unless you have serious concerns about the well-being, the medical well-being of your student, that you have them go ahead and take that test this year and get that out of the way. Um, the other, uh, there are no other requirements for testing for freshmen. No, because their social studies will be a performance assessment this year, um, which unfortunately I don't know a lot about because that's being sent down through the social studies department chairs from the county level. How that, so I don't know how that's going to look this year. Yeah, my understanding for those performance assessments is that they'll be administered in the course of the, during the, the usual course of business in those courses. And we expect our students to have a great deal of success on them. We're setting them up for the opportunity to be successful. And we believe with a bona fide effort, um, each student is going to be successful on the, uh, locally the, the uh, performance assessments. We will have more information uh, for you on that. And we will get the opt-out form posted in a prominent place on our website and in the Schoology Dominion High School page so that you can find that easily in the days to come. Or you could email me and I'll send it back to you as an attachment. Thanks so much, everybody. We're going to scoot now. Get ready. We have another meeting that we're going to conduct in Spanish at 8 p.m. We sure appreciate you coming.
I want to thank Mr. Edwards and Mr. Chuba for their thorough uh, preparation for this. And as always, thanks, Mrs. Comey, Comey and your, uh, your family for uh, sacrificing your Thursday evening for all of us to be the host. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. And as always, go tight.